Mr. President. Senator from Oklahoma. Earlier this year, this chamber was full of conversation about immigration. We had four bipartisan proposals that all came to this floor. All four of them had votes. All four of them had some engagement from different members. All four of them failed. While we didn't succeed in getting something passed and resolved on immigration, I would note that over 70 senators voted for at least one of the four options that included wall funding, increased border security, and naturalization for those students that are in DACA or, ed, or DACA eligible. At least 70 senators plus voted for those three options. Now, they were written different ways in each bill, but they all that same basis. I was one of those. Like many of my friends on both sides of the aisle during the debate, I said that Americans don't hold children accountable for the actions of their parents. It's been a basic principle we've held for a long time. We believe in the protection of children and the unity of families. That's what we've been about. Now, we have some debate about that because some in this body believe a child is not a child until you can see them, and some believe a child is a child even when they're in the womb. But we do have unity about those individuals that when we can see them and know them as a child, that we keep them as a family. Though you could strongly put me on the side of saying, I think a child's a child even when they're in the womb. It's right for us to be able to focus on families. But quite frankly, it's also right of us to be able to focus on immigration law and to believe that we are a nation of laws. And we have a great dilemma at this point happening around our border. Let me set some context for this that I think is important, that I want to make sure that people understand. We are a very open nation for immigration. We have been before and we are now. Last Friday, I had the wonderful opportunity to be able to speak at a naturalization ceremony in Oklahoma City. Watching people from all over the world take the oath, set aside their old country, and become citizens of the United States. I dare anyone to go to one of those events and try to keep a dry eye. They're incredibly moving to watch people have this event happen in their life that they will never forget. They became an American. They didn't just go to America, they're Americans. They have the exact same rights as anyone else in this chamber and live under the same law. 1.1 million people a year become naturalized citizens of the United States. Each day, 500,000 people a day legally cross the border from Mexico into the United States. But we still have a debate on what happens for those other individuals that aren't the 1.1 million that are legally going through the process to become U.S. citizens, or the half a million people a day that legally cross into the United States. What do we do with those individuals that choose not to do it legally? It's a much smaller number, but it's exceptionally contentious for us because we're a compassionate nation, but we're also a nation that believes in following the law. Rightfully so. In fact, many people are fleeing from countries where the law is ignored to come to a country like ours. So how did we get here? When a family is detained for illegally crossing the border, the Department of Homeland Security has a longstanding policy. And it's not just for this administration, it's longstanding policy. Not to separate children from their parents unless there's one of three things that occurs. DHS can establish that the adult traveling with the child is actually the guardian of the child or the parent of the child. The second one, they believe the child's in danger. For instance, if there's a belief that this child's being trafficked or abused. Or the third area is the individual that's traveling with the child, parent or guardian assumed, is being prosecuted for a crime. Those are the three ways that you separate children from their families. Throughout the last administration to this one, those individuals were prosecuted. But the difference is this administration has determined now they're going to prosecute more individuals when they're crossing the border. The previous administrations would look the other way. 
They would see individuals crossing the border and they would say, if they haven't committed some other crime besides crossing the border, they would look the other way and they would allow them to come in. Or they would take that unit and they would say, here's what's called a notice to appear. And you can go into the interior of the country and live in the United States, but show up for a court hearing a year or two from now in some place that you want to go to. The problem is that the Trump administration has noted is the vast majority of those individuals that were given a notice to appear at a future court date never show up for that court date. And they live illegally present in the United States. Now again, they're not one of the half a million people a day, each day that cross legally into the country. They're the small group of individuals that chose to cross illegally into the country. They're given the notice to appear and then don't appear. So the Trump administration is struggling with this right now, trying to figure out what do we do in that situation? Well, their decision was to say zero tolerance. We're gonna to prosecute those individuals that come. Rather than just give them a, a ticket to come future to a court date, let's do the date right now. The problem with that is, as soon as you press charges on that individual, you get one of those three criteria that kicks in immediately. As soon as charges are filed on the adult, not on the child, but on the adult, then the adult is taken to have charges filed on them and start going through the legal process. And there is a requirement to separate the children then and to be able to then have the children go to what's called the least restrictive environment. Usually that's with a family member somewhere in the country, but it's usually two months or so before we can get that child to someone else to be able to help them be back with a family member. That is a mess. Now, it's something that has occurred based on the decision of the adult that brought the child and the decision of the adult to illegally cross the border, but it is still a mess. And we as compassionate Americans absolutely detest watching families being pulled apart. As I have said to the Department of Homeland Security, our default every time should be to keep families together unless there's absolutely no way to be able to do it. Families should stay together. These are individuals that are fleeing from whatever country or coming for economic benefit. They should face the consequences of illegally crossing the border rather than doing it the right way legally that hundreds of thousands of people do every single day, doing it the right way. But we should try to keep families together if at all possible. So the question becomes now what? Since the policy change of May the 5th, there are about 2,200 families that have crossed the border since May the 5th that have been picked up. So about 2,200 adults that have been taken one way and their children taken the other way. That's very difficult for our nation to watch. As a father, I absolutely believe in every fiber of my being that children should be safe, kept with their own families in a loving and healthy environment. But now we're in a tough spot. So let me try to review and try to make some recommendations of what we can do about this. In 1997, there was an agreement called the Flores Settlement. The Flores Settlement was an agreement between the Department of Justice and a group of immigrant minors. And it stated that the federal government must release migrant children held in federal custody to their parent or guardian without unnecessary delay. Now in this case, their parent or guardian is under criminal prosecution, so they can't do that. So the next thing they have to do is to find the least restrictive environment to be able to release this child. That's based on this 97 agreement, 1997. Now this is not a new issue, and every administration since 1997 has tried to figure out what to do with it. The previous administration, as I mentioned, just released people, adults and children, into the interior of the country because they didn't know what to do with this agreement. I would say there is a way to be able to resolve this and to be able to help keep families together no matter what their status is as they're working through this process. In fact, I believe in it enough in February and one of the proposals that I brought to this body to vote on in February when we were dealing with immigration as a whole, there was an agreement to resolve Flores in that part. We voted on, on, on this already. I've had folks as recently as today say, Bring a piece of legislation to be able to fix this. I smile at them and go, I did four months ago. And we voted on it as a body. Because this is not a new issue. 
It's not just popped up since May the 5th and the Trump administration's focus on prosecution. This has been an issue for a couple of decades. Solving the Flores loophole is exceptionally important to us in our immigration conversation because there are no simple answers to it until we resolve that issue. When the court requires us to be able to separate children from families while they're under prosecution and to find the least restrictive environment to ship children off to, it makes for this convoluted, bureaucratic, painful separation of families. Now, I don't think that was the court's intention, but it has clearly been the result of that since 1997. And now it's happening more, but it's happened before in the past, and it will continue to happen until we solve this. So what we brought up in February, we need to continue to be able to debate and to be able to get this done. We've tried this before. Let's keep focusing on trying to be able to solve this. In the meantime, it is my recommendation to this administration that they offer to families, before they do prosecution, the opportunity to do voluntary return. Currently, if you're from Mexico or if you're from Canada and you illegally cross the border, you have the opportunity to have what's called voluntary return that you don't go through all the prosecution, you know you're in the country illegally, you're not quite at the point of charges filed against you, you have that opportunity, you can take that opportunity. I think they should offer that to every family that comes across the border before they file charges, the opportunity to say, keep your family together. Instead of going through this painful separation of any kind of prosecution that would happen regardless of how prosecution occurs give that family the opportunity to be able to stay together, make a decision on what they're going to do together, and to be able to get this done. That is something they can do. Short of that, I absolutely believe that Kirsten Nielsen, who is our Secretary of Homeland Security, is exactly correct when she says this is Congress's fault. Congress has had the opportunity for a couple of decades now to be able to fix this, and Congress for a couple of decades has said that's not a problem, that's not a problem, that's not a problem. Myself and several other senators and quite a few House members have continued to waive this issue and say it is a problem no matter how it's used, whether it's used with heavy prosecution or light prosecution in previous administrations. It is always a problem, and Congress has the ability to fix it, but Congress has been unwilling to do it. It is time Congress steps up and does the job that they're supposed to do, take the votes that they're supposed to take. I'm very aware these issues are difficult and technical and emotional, but these are real lives that are mixed into this. Individuals that were created in the image of God that have value and worth, families that are affected by this. Congress needs to step up, take the votes, and actually do the task that needs to be done. Administration's right in that. This is Congress's problem. And it's Congress's responsibility to fix it. And we shouldn't leave the administration hanging out there. But I would also say to the administration, you have other options and other tools in the meantime to be able to keep families together. Use them. For the sake of all of those kids and all those families, use them. But in the meantime, in the middle of this intolerable position, let's step up and let's take the votes. We all know we need border security. In this body, border security was an overwhelming bipartisan supported measure in 2006 when the Secure Fences Act was passed. We believe there needs to be border security. Let's vote for it. Let's get it done. Let's not just talk about we should do that someday. Let's actually do it. Let's add more immigration judges. Our backlog of a year and a half before you can get to an immigration court is absurd. Catch and release is absurd. No one would do that or should do that. We have the ways to be able to fix that. I've stated over and over again in this body, I think it's absurd that we have individuals that are in this country that have grown up in this country under no fault of their own that we have just ignored and pretended they're not there. Those kids that are in DACA or DACA eligible deserve an answer. This Congress should vote on it. 
rather than just keep them in limbo. Now, I've stated publicly, I believe they should have a shot at naturalization. I think it's a reasonable thing to say. Give us 10 years to get the border security done. At the same time, those individuals are in DACA, have a 10-year path, that they're headed towards naturalization. That should not be unreasonable. In the meantime, give those individuals the opportunity to be able to travel and work and go to school and to be able full participants in our society. I think the diversity lottery is absurd. It just tells the rest of the world, if you want to be an American, which I think is one of the greatest gifts in the world, other than salvation in Christ, I think it's one of the greatest gifts you can possibly have on this earth is American citizenship. We just put it out there and say, you don't have to have any qualifications. If you want to come, come. I think we should actually extend it to people who are going to engage in the economy, be productive parts of our society, who have gifts and abilities that will help us as a culture. Let's make the extension to that. Let's keep the diversity lottery. I'm grateful to have people from all over the world here. But let's just make sure they're bringing the skills that we need. I just don't think that's that unreasonable. There are things that we can do that we agree on that we should move on, rather than just saying, someday let's do. Some days today. Some days right now. It's time, Congress, to be able to step up and take the lead and stop blaming everybody else. It's time for us to do our job and to be able to vote on this and resolve it. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.